Hi everyone, this is Dan, and uh, this is uh, Daredevil Born Again, the graphic uh, trade paperback, or graphic novel trade paperback. And uh, last we, uh, so the title of the video is Daredevil number uh, 228, and uh, we're continuing the Born Again uh, saga right here. This issue's name is Purgatory. Last we left off, left off uh, our good friend Matt Murdock, uh, uh, his life had just been fucked up <laughs> by the kingpin. Uh, so now we, we get back into the action. We get a phone. Uh, we go back to uh, Foggy and Glory, uh, who get a phone call from Matt, and uh, Matt's like she's screaming. She it doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, uh, this freaking thought <laughs> has been jumping on Foggy's junk lately. <laughs> uh, funny. So we get back to, here's the, the, the official splash page. Uh, you get uh, Matt Murdock intermogling as himself. He's found himself a really cheap motel for a couple bucks just to stay the night because everything's just jacked up right now. He's got no money. He's got no, uh, he's got no credit cards. He's got uh, no friends, nothing. The Kingpin has completely destroyed his life. Here we go. We got uh, Ralph Macchio as the editor, Jim Shooter, uh, the boss. Frank Miller and Dave Mazzicelli. A very interesting Frank uh, or uh, Jim Shooter usually forces all of his writers and his uh, his storytellers to do just standard introductions. Uh, usually follow a format. In this case, it, it's not really necessarily followed that uh, cleanly in this issue, which I think is interesting. So again, modeling himself, he's he's freaking sore. He doesn't get uh, what's been going on. Uh, and he's trying to figure out, you know, how, how did this all happen to him? You know, and, and he knows, he, he's like, this started months ago, and, and there's only one guy this could be. This has to be the kingpin. The kingpin is, is the one behind all of this. So he thinks about it. Then we switch back, and here's the kingpin right here, and he is just, uh, you know, we get, we get the, you get an actual more uh, shooter-style introduction of the kingpin right here. Uh... And, and for him, we have this, this caption narrative right here where uh, the Kingpin is just sitting here in delight. He's just absolutely destroying Matt Murdock. And he knows Matt Murdock is the Daredevil now. And now at this point, you know, the Daredevil was a pain in the, a pain in the ass for him. But now it's just like, oh, what once was, you know, a pain in the ass is now just my daily joy. He's just slowly, little, little by little, destroying him and observing, you know, what's going on as he sees a good man get destroyed. So Matt, you know, more inner monologuing with himself, and he's like, "All right, I, I'm, I'm done with this. I, I got to go do something right now, or else I'm gonna freaking lose it." <laughs> and he's fantasizing right now. It's like, you know what? I should just go find the kingpin. I should just go freaking beat the shit out of him and kill him. <laughs> and this, this is so cool. Frank Miller's kind of just. He's he's uh he's showing Matt Murdock, you know, the a, a more human, you know, uh, aggressive, monstrous, vengeful side of Matt Murdock. You know, everything is being torn away from him, and he and he has nothing. He has nothing to lose. So he's he's thinking about he's thinking about throwing everything that Daredevil stands for out the window for revenge. You know, he he wakes up. He starts calling the operator for, for what the time is. And then he's still uh, calling uh, Glory and Foggy at the same time. He's starting to lose it. It's pretty funny. It's like, I'm on to you, Nelson. Yeah, he's freaking losing it, dude. He's thinking his best friend is betraying him. And then meanwhile, like, just like look at the craziness going on in Matt Murdock's face. The, the, the motel owner knocks on the door for the morning rent. And freaking, Mur freaking Matt Murdock chokes him out. He's losing it so much that he's freaking choking out a motel owner. You know, and he's thinking the whole time, like, oh, the kingpin probably sent him. Like, dude, Matt's freaking losing his mind right here. We go back to the kingpin, and his assistant, who's uh, keeping an eye on Matt Murdock, uh, is just telling him what's going on. Like, dude, this, this guy's freaking losing it. What the, what the hell's going on here? And uh, the kingpin's just working out, having enjoying <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> like, it's like his favorite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just look at Matt. Look at Matt Murdock's face right here. He's just sort of like sitting here, like impatient, while these guys try to rob a train. All right, so these guys rob a train. This guy's uh, reporting back what he sees as they're kind of flashbacking to to this this action right here. Guy points a gun at Matt Murdock's head, 
he freaking Matt freaking loses it. He freaking breaks his wrist, breaks his ribs, kicks the shit out of him. This guy gets the the freaking back elbow knee to the face. This guy tries to shoot him, and Matt just beats the freaking crap and shatters the glass. Meanwhile, Kingpin's like he knows, like yeah, dude, he's easily losing. I got this guy in the palm of my hand now. A freaking cop walks in, and Matt Murdock freaking beats up a cop. Like you could tell, he's he's just about ready to to just crack, because he he does the unthinkable and beats up an officer. Meanwhile, he he goes on in this phone call, and this is a really confusing panel thing right here. So he's talking to supposedly Foggy on the phone call that he just beat up a cop, and they're just like, oh well, cop might have been you know working for Kingpin, and he's talking back and forth, just one side. You see only one side of the phone call, and then when he drops it, it's like at the tone, the time will be ten thirty-two. And my my theory is he actually wasn't even calling Foggy. He's just calling for the time, but he thinks he's calling Foggy because Matt Murdock's freaking losing it right now. We go back. We transition over to uh, I believe Karen is in Mexico, and she's trying to get a hold of Matt any way she can while she's running away from it. And it's really crazy how how she's going back. It's like, oh, I remember the number. I'll never forget it. Matt would have never left that place. And you could just see in her face, just she's absolutely just her life is life is ruined. She's just trying to find any any fragment of the past that she can go back to to save herself. Meanwhile, uh, Matt's life is currently being ruined right now, and he's losing his mind. God, this this is so cool. <laughs> You go over here and you get uh, while this it, while he's walking into the king kingpin's uh, headquarters, uh, you get a flash over to J. Jonah, J. J. and uh, and uh, Ben Ulrich as they're talking over that. Hey, there's no way Matt Murdock this stuff is true. He's he's a good guy. Uh, meanwhile, Matt is proceeding to show he's not that great of a guy as he walks into uh, King's ben, kingpin's gym, and they just they just go at it right now. And then you see, she uh, in the middle of this, uh, you know, you get you know another cinematic uh, flashback to Karen walking away through Mexico, and you know she's she's just losing it, losing it. Matt, where is he? He always made so much sense of things. Can't keep hiding. New York, that's where Matt is, phone or not. She has to get there any way way she can. Meanwhile, uh, Matt's like getting the first couple blows on the kingpin, and uh, reality sets in. <laughs> And the kingpin just freaking wrecks him, just destroys him right here. And here you get the the iconic next one. So we switch over to the kingpin's perspective, and he, you know, this is all just inner monologuing of him planning. Like this is how it's going to happen, right? Uh, we're going to throw him in a cab. He's going to get tossed off a pier. Uh, we're going to throw an empty whiskey bottle uh, in there. Uh, we're gonna strap him to the seatbelt. We're gonna beat the beat the owner of this cab driver to death with the billy club that he had here, and then we're just gonna toss him over here. And uh, a couple weeks later, well, people will find his dead body, and there'll be no questions asked. And he's just you know, t uh, you know, intermodeling, just happy with himself. This is the triumph of the spirit. He has he has disgraced, destroyed, and murdered the only good man he has ever known. And then we get, like, they finally find the cab. There is blood and bloody evidence of a struggle. There is a shattered windshield, a safety belt, severed by the windshield, shield's glass, and what must have been a hideous effort of will. There is no corpse. There is no corpse. There is no corpse. <laughs> Man, dude. This is, like, this is how it should be right here. You're probably, like, I can imagine, you know, growing up with this, right, and you're reading this, and the whole time you're like, you know, oh, man, you know, Matt's Matt's really freaking losing it right now is the kingpin, and then you think he's going to beat the kingpin to death, but then turn around, the kingpin just kicks his ass, and then Matt Murdock's about to get tossed and killed and, and basically, you know, whacked, uh, and no one will ever find out what happened to him. But then you get that last couple panels and then the last full page spread of Matt coming out, you know, drenched wet, uh, surviving that, that whole that whole attempt by the Kingpin. And yeah, dude, dude, it's hype. It's freaking it's freaking amazing. Anyway, uh, if you like this issue or you like this video, uh, 
hit the hit the thumbs up uh subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the bell for notifications if you got any comments on uh issue uh 228 leave them down below or the born again uh saga and uh, i will see you next time